the sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these things simply aren't true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Ugh, ugh, serious crap! Every conspiracy you pretty much ever heard of is all pretty much true. 9-11 was an inside job. No one's ever walked on the moon. The vaccines are poison. Can you cough in my face? The Channel Zero guys are the perfect guys for the job. I mean, are they talented broadcasters? No. Uh, do they have charisma? No. Are they particularly interesting? Not really. And they're complete fucking whack jobs. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Now listen to me, Elvin. I'm offering you a spot on the Kirkman Hand YouTube channel where you do your own show with these conspiracies. Oh. Elvin's going to be a star in this world. You guys know what this represents? Well, the memories of the college of the school. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. The reason that there are conspiracy theories is that because there are conspiracies, and if you Correct. disagree with that fact, you're a fucking moron. Yeah, Building 7 is a mystery, for sure. I don't know why Building 7 collapsed. It's rare that I'm the most sane person on a podcast. <laughs> I would bomb the shit out of him. They introduced for the first time ever anywhere that... Almost a dream of mine. Channel Zero guys. Welcome to the fucking show. Put Back the up. fucking disclaimer up at the beginning. They don't speak for us. Holla at your boy indeed. We're back with uh, another Channel Zero show. This is coming to you on Wednesday night, uh, the seventh. We gotta start taking timestamps because uh the 10 days of darkness, the election, everything's in a very tight window. Uh, unrelated, but I'm going to relate it. Van Halen died today, guys. You guys are Van Halen fans. You know, any you guys care? Sorry, it sucks. Uh, he was an I mean, absolute yeah, I legend. See, I don't want to see anybody die. I just, it's just absolute like legend. It's like the music you hear in like a Boston bar at, at like midnight when everyone's hammered and everyone like it's just corny. Caught for teacher, dude. I don't know. It's, it's just a jam. Like, just but he legitimately, in all seriousness, he was like a guitar virtuoso. I, he did shit no one ever did and still can't really do a lot of. He was incredible. Where does he rank with like the, the Hendrix and Clapton's of the world? Oh, he's fucking right up there. Okay. Really? All-time greatest guitarist. He's like probably definitely top 10. Wow. Wow. That's a hot take. I don't, okay. even, someone, I don't, I don't think that's a hot take. Someone in the live chat's going to call you out. I can feel must. it in my bones. <laughs> that's fine. But it, he's, I mean, he's insane like technically on guitar may i remind you jeffrey epstein was a fan of disgraced comedian louis ck celine dion and van halen according to his eclectic spotify playlists that were recovered <laughs> what are you serious i am dead serious who got copies of his spotify playlist that's so outrageous. sorry can you give me that rundown that that <laughs> lineup again that was all over the place he likes the louis ck which yeah. makes sense yeah <laughs> celine dion I'm sure we can. She seems like she's into adrenochrome. 
No? Oh, oh, she's oh, she's evil. Yeah, we'll have okay. to do an episode on her. So he's already two for two on the evil meter. Van Halen. I don't think we have any dirt on him, but that's the third person on the list. Well, I don't think Louis C.K. is evil. He just likes to jerk off in front of women. It's fucking weird, but uh, I don't know. If that, that's not like Jeffrey Epstein level evil. True. And he asked them if it was okay to jerk off in front of them. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Got to get that consent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was what you can catch on his Spotify if you want to look him up. He's at Jeffrey Epstein if you want to share playlists. <laughs> probably still alive because he's probably still alive, jamming out. Um, but imagine if that's how we found out. It was like because it shows your shows friends what they're listening like, to. Yeah, it was like Jeffrey Epstein's currently listening to "My Heart Will Go On" by some. <laughs> yeah, he, and he, yeah, or some yeah. weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was also the guy that watched porn while on the uh, treadmill, right? Uh, that I sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah honestly, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always thought. I know. Uh, sorry, I'm eating up the clock here. I know we want to get to the news, but I always thought two things on porn. Really quickly, <laughs> the people that watch it just for the sake of watching it are odd, right? Oh like they just put it on in the background and it's just kind of on. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Weird. I do that with the office. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. There are people that do that. Number two, I called into KMS on Friday and asked Kirk about the incest category in porn and why it's so big in the U.S. He is of the belief that stepmom, stepsister, all that stuff doesn't really count. I'll make the argument that it's it's related at least <laughs> loosely. A, do you guys are you guys on Team Elvin or Team Kirk on that take? And also, do you have a take on why it's so popular in the U.S.? Well, well I, I'm assuming, going to take a leap here, they're not actually stepbrother and stepsister. Oh. I'm just going to throw that out there. So that being said, then yeah, what the, who gives a shit? It's just a title. I don't know why people are into that or why it's so popular or whatever, but I think most people are like, oh, hot chick. Okay, cool. I'm going to watch this. They're not even looking at the fucking title. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. So know you're not a big plotline guy, then. That's the weird. Then we we disconnect. <laughs> yeah, we disconnect early on in this journey. Okay. We are certainly, yeah, I'm certainly not a plotline guy. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the 40 year old virgin when he puts on the porn and it's like it's Star Wars or Star Trek yeah. or something. Oh my god, <laughs> he's like fast forwarding through the porn part just to watch the plot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the plot is the turn on. Come on, I can't believe I'm alone on this one. <laughs> Well, what's not a turn on is um, the situation that happened last week with her. Chrissy Teigen uh, reportedly lost her, I don't know if a gender or, or sex or whatever the proper terminology is nowadays. I don't know if it was a boy or a girl, baby, but lost the baby. But there's some speculation out there. Ain't that right, e? That's correct. Now, we're not saying what, you know, we're not making a, a I guess, a determination here so don't hold us accountable we're just kind of showing what we come across and i found this to be kind of interesting zach if you want to pull up that first clip because some people are saying that the chrissy Teigen post was a honeypot i mean she's already kind of been involved in banning people and it seems like right after that that's when twitter started shutting down queuing on people and shit hey, like that can you sorry to interrupt you can you just give us a quick like what is a honeypot oh For those that are wondering yeah, yeah. yeah. A honeypot is basically a trap. It's they they set it up so that people come to it. And it like, for example, Epstein Island was a honeypot. That's where they brought prestigious people so that they could get blackmail on them and own them afterward. And in this case, people are saying the honeypot was to get people banned from Twitter, the people who would speak negatively about the Chrissy Teigen post. Mm -hmm. And this this post kind of shows a guy. If you scroll down just a little, Zach. Uh, Jordan Sather, I follow him. I believe some of his stuff, some not. He's a conspiracy theory guy, but he made, he must have like retweeted it or commented on it and was blocked right away. Now, could it be because of other things he posts? Sure, but other people are saying it happened to them as well. So I don't know. I mean, we, we went over how crazy this whole story was in the first place and how like you wouldn't take a picture in that moment. Well, we so, wouldn't. Normal people wouldn't. Fair. Fair, Do we but, also know what he said? Because I think context it makes all of the difference. Right as to why he was banned. Oh, oh that's what his comment was. What does that say? He's talking about moon child sacrifices. Well, yeah. I mean, he's into some deep like conspiracy shit, and I mean, he thinks that you know, Chrissy yeah. Teigen is a witch, kind of like Hillary. And the like first, that. the first part of the tweet is. I, normal. It says, don't know of any woman slash couple that would take high def bedside pictures as 
such right after losing a baby. All right, period sure. right there. Does that get him banned if he ended the tweet right there? No. I don't think so. No way. Probably not. And it says, meanwhile, the story was released today on the first day of October, which also happens to be a full moon. Moon oh. child sacrifice, question mark? Wit witchy ritual vibes all over this one. See, and he might be crazy, but at the same time, there's a lot of people, including myself, that believe that there are certain days that they make specific sacrifices on. Remember, we watched that clip from uh, Dr. Phil where the mother was talking about it as well. Yeah. Um, so there is some, some shit to this. And I mean, we did see in the last episode that, you know, Chrissy Teigen is involved with the Church of Satan and shit like that. So we're just presenting evidence. You come to your own conclusion, but I... I I don't see, I mean, I could definitely see this being a possibility that's a honeypot. Earlier in the week, you 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 uh, gave Zach and I a heads up that there could be a picture of Epstein, I think, with a watch or something like that, if I remember correctly, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Is that something like a honeypot as well? Would that be considered a honeypot? Yes, exactly. There. So Q posted that we're going to be getting in sometime in the short term a, a clip of a video that was taken in Epstein's cell when he took his life, supposedly. And he's like, this is completely fake if it does come out, blah, blah, blah. Kind of just forewarning us, which, I mean, I would kind of, I would doubt they would release that to the public anyways. So, yeah. Um, like, forgive me for not being an expert on Moonchild sacrifices, but... <laughs> I would assume they would be like done, uh, like burning an effigy in the woods in a flame. Not like, so is this like nurse in the background helping them sacrifice this newborn baby, like at the hospital? Could be. I mean, <laughs> you you yeah. said that so casual. <laughs> well, I mean, think about all these um, people that work at abortion clinics that we've been finding out about storing babies at their houses and making sacrifices with those. And like, this is something that runs pretty deep. And I know that it's, kind of eye-opening and unbelievable in some ways but i mean she could have helped that could have been it like i don't know maybe she helped extract the adrenochrome I, there's like I, I i think she's just addicted to attention and like took the picture and put it online the nurse wouldn't necessarily need to be involved right if she did something at home to force a miscarriage and then just showed up to the hospital the nurse is just pretty much yeah that, that could very well be the case as well so and not that we're saying that happened. No, just no, we're not. Just we're just clear. saying that there's possibilities <laughs> that exist. <That's laughs> so what's the other possibility for, for Chrissy Teigen here? What else did I have on her? Oh, well, some people posted this. This is another thing. I'm not taking a stance on this. Um, so people like Zonker don't come at me and or ban us or whatever. Like, I'm not taking a stance. This is just more evidence I would like to present that somebody posted um, pictures of Chrissy Teigen and I've heard this, that like they're saying that like she was never pregnant in the first place and that it was faked. So, um, Zach, can you pull that up on the screen for the viewers? Oh, my bad. I thought I did. <laughs> it's all good. So they're showing, you know, basically 12 days apart um, going from wearing like basically a crop top shirt. And now she has a baby bump. I mean, hmm. is it possible? Yeah, I, I think you I mean, it could grow that fast, too. Like there's. I'm just presenting the evidence that people are putting out. I'm not taking a stand. Is it possible she posted that August 2nd picture, uh, but it was actually listed it as August 2nd, but it was maybe earlier in the pregnancy just to make her look better? Uh, yeah, it could have been from months before. So, like, yeah. we don't know all of the context. I just, these are things I've been hearing on the, the internets, so. Dude, clean your fucking house. You're rich. What, is that her house in the second picture? <laughs> background? Jeez, fuck, up. I know. Look at that. There's shit everywhere. It's like toilet paper on the floor behind her. God. Get a clue. Pay, um, some, pay someone to clean it up. To pay uh, someone. I mean, if you're talking to Biden, he's going to tell you exactly who you should hire. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, let's go re re revisit the Mickey Pot because uh, there was some feedback online on that. And there was uh, another kind of shout out to the 10-2. Mm. Um, this is interesting. First off, we should probably say, you know, the, the, the woman of my dreams here, Kaylee. <laughs> Is, is falling ill. She's a badass right. bitch. Like she doesn't give a shit. And yeah, yeah she awesome. just tested positive, right? Yeah, yeah, she did. Apparently, she's asymptomatic though. So false positives, maybe. Who knows? So but, we had a clock that had the hour set to uh, you know the hour at ten, and then the minutes at two. Uh, shout out to ten two. Um, <laughs> also on her clock behind her, 
Yes. Which seems strange. Is there a timestamp on that? That's what I was looking I, for. I was looking for it. They only got one part of the screen. So it probably was the time in the background, but I just wanted to throw this out there because I know we were speculating on the 10 2 before. Or what are the chances, though? What are the chances? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> what do you think, Zach? Just a coincidence? Yeah, obviously. Of course. I also, just to be clear, don't think Chrissy Teigen performed a moon child sacrifice either i didn't say i did either I'm okay gonna... that's fair but q mentions 10 2 like or again maybe she's just playing into it or like i always 10 8 it could be 10 8 with the red dot all right so we also have uh you want to go from my, my dream woman to the the woman of my nightmares uh hillary's back in the news and Big. are we gonna see the handcuffs sometime soon what's happening here lock her up I would love to. I just don't know at this point. She's the slipperiest creature in the swamp. Like, there's mm -hmm. just no doubt. She's the eel, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> this drop today, I was jacked up. So uh, basically, John Brennan's notes showing that at, when Hillary's whole email investigation started, basically, she came up with the idea of the whole Russian Trump scandal, which I... I told my buddy this from the beginning like because i remember in the either the first or the second debate she started planting the seeds of russian collusion with trump and all this stuff and i was like this is what they're going to run with and it just makes sense now the more and more that, that comes out um what do you i mean i don't know if we're going to see her in cuffs uh <laughs> so well we have the standing bet for any new listeners that i don't think she'll ever be in handcuffs so that that bet will end whether she when she dies or when she gets arrested i guess what um, if she dies under mysterious circumstances does that come mm -hmm. towards anything not for this bet no not for the bet. <laughs> but, uh, th so i think we kind of talked about this before maybe not too much on the show but like when they, when they keep saying russian collusion russian collusion and they try to what does that mean like, what were the russians doing that won trump the presidency they supposedly Fucking social media, apparently. But that, but that, that the Clintons do that too, though. Everybody uses social media today to win votes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the more that we find out, it was Hillary that colluded with the Russians in this whole thing in the first place. So like, it, it, this is all going to backfire. The Democrats are classic for basically pointing the finger and projecting. Basically, everything they're doing wrong, they're going to say that the Republicans are doing. And I think right. this is going to backfire huge. I have this tweet here from, uh, it's not up on the screen, but from Mar Maria Bartiromo. She's a um, reporter on Fox News or Fox Business. And she had posted about this and she goes, they wiretapped Paige for a year while Trump was president and trapped his team, leaked classified documents to the media, lied to Congress, all, all the while sat on evidence that proved that this was all Hillary's idea. They weaponized the U.S. Intelligent agent, intelligence agencies to elect their girl. Like, that is, like, I know that people, I feel like people don't think this is a big deal. But, like, th this is a coup. This is a coup. Like, this has been going on for years now. They're trying to de-seat Trump. Yeah, de dethrone Trump. And this was a plot right as he was elected president. They came up with something to try to. Go, come after him and it's still going on today on this Sunday. is one of those unfortunate like attention span ones that people right. just don't care after a while like news well, can I, break I, every other week and people just stop caring you know other than us <clears> and a, <throat> other small subset of people I, I just have russia fatigue at this point everything's russia like russia right. like, every time i hear russia now i'm like this shit again like what the fuck it, it's already been proven wrong right like russia yes russia tried to influence our election so do a lot of other countries but they did not collude with Trump. Can we drop it now? Like, there was never a, a, a video or whatever of him pissing on some Russian stripper or any yeah. of that stuff. None yeah. of this is true. But I just don't understand yeah. the social media thing. Like, that's what every single political ad is. That's all the stuff on. That's what you're doing is you're trying to win votes and win. The, They're just saying because it's a, a foreign, you know. Impact. What if you hire a company not based in the United States? Well, that's exactly what the fucking Clinton campaign did. Right. They, they paid uh, Russians and George, uh, whatever his name is, Christopher Steele, for right. a document. Yeah, what was that, the name of that company? They Fusion were GPS. Yeah, Fusion GPS. Th that's the whole thing. Is like literally, they did all of this. And they're right. accusing Trump of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Take on me. 
Oh, yes. The Hillary. Uh, the yeah, Hillary. that's actually the next link. <laughs> yeah. So Hillary did a podcast recently. I, I don't know who she was on. Who gives a shit, right? But somebody like zoomed in. On, like, first of all, have you ever used a computer? She literally has it on top of the box it came in. But I actually do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my laptop is on a box right now. So it's higher up. Okay, I'm, fair enough. You know, so I'm not like, if the thing's not looking up my chin. I'm trying to get closer <laughs> to my eyes. Yeah, and you can stand as well, I guess, in yeah. some cases, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, people zoomed in I, on one of the books that it's stacked on. So there's a there's a video here. Just oh, yeah. like, if you watch like the first like minute or so. I think I got to turn the audio off. <laughs> the, great music. Oh, okay. I think it goes away, actually. All right, I'm just going to mute this. Okay. Um. You got to hit play, though. Oh, it continues to zoom in? Okay. So Lucio Babaco is the book they're point, pointing at. Yeah, you can just let it play. Want and another, like, Satanist artist person or something? Exactly, yep. Like, what was the other girl's name? Um, Marina Abramovich. Yeah. Lucio Babaco is an obscure author with only five reviews on his book. And the cover of this book, by the way, the book we're looking at is called er Erotics for anyone just listening. And it's got like a, and this one has literally devils banging each other, demons, and playing flutes. So, yeah, this is this dude's artwork. Of course, <laughs> what do you laugh about, Elvin? <laughs> Just playing flutes is, is, is hysterical. <laughs> That's awesome. But, like, yeah, so this dude's into some satanic shit. Of course, she's got the book on her desk. Just, I mean, could it be a coincidence, Zach? Is this a coincidence, too? Or, no. Or? Well, I, I think they're all pretty clearly into this weird shit with the with the other chick I, I already forget her name again but like yeah no that's not i don't think that's i mean last week we talked about chelsea clinton in the church of satan as well yeah. so there's obviously like a lot that one it's still like almost seemed like tongue-in-cheeker i don't know that one seemed weird to me that because again when it's on like twitter and it, like you're exchanging tweets with the church of satan like and you're chelsea clinton like obviously people are going to see that it's not you're not even trying to be like in the shadows about it hiding in plain sight type deal I, I guess this guy um, gets it. <laughs> yeah, so I want to go back to something you said. <laughs> just, I, I just want to go back to something you said, Zach, because I, I want to make sure I, I play my role. And I'm not even playing a role. I agree with this. You have Russia fatigue. Yeah. I agree with that. I also have China fatigue on the yeah, other side. For sure. And I'd like to just hear more about solutions rather than pointing at other nations. Like if they're hacking our elections and you're doing things. How about the next next conversation is this is what I'm doing to ensure that doesn't happen. Right. That's bipartisan. Like I think that should be absolutely a conversation. That stop being reasonable. I mean <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not what we do here. It's just insane. It's not it's not a great look for anybody. Um, no. I'm tired of hearing about these other countries that are just like why why are we puppets? Why China can other nations influence us? Yeah, What's seriously. That? China it, ate your lunch. That was a great line. Yeah. That's, great. Uh, that's a great point. We're the, like, we've talked about this, though. Like, we are the freest country on earth. Like, like the, to to strike us to destroy our country, will the rest of the world will fall. Like, not to be, like, on our high horse about, like, go America, but, like, we really are. Like, I'm thankful for it. And, I, you know, if, these, if this ever became a communist country, the world's fucked. It is going to go to a world, one world government and we're all sh shit out of luck. Yeah. I don't even think they need to like stir shit up. I feel like we're just going to do, we're doing it to ourselves already. I mean, with the division, I, I, I really think social media is like the biggest problem, meaning like we don't, the, China or Russia doesn't, they don't need to interfere. We're already fucking. Well, I think they're playing part. a part in it. Just like George Soros is playing a part in the riots. Like there's all these, like people injecting money in different places that you mm -hmm. know maybe it's not yeah. their they're doing but they're influencing it with their money I, sure. that's what i think yeah to push different buttons i mean to fuck with america you need to come at it at different angles it's like death by a thousand paper cuts type deal exactly so do you think like russia china whoever are actually working together to like take us down honestly i I don't know how much I believe about Russia. China, yeah, yeah I think they are, they're nasty. But 
Russia, I and I'm not some Russian agent or any shit like that. Um, mm-hmm. I just think that like I, the way look at it this way, right? The way the media goes after Trump is the way that the deep state goes after Putin. Everything that you hear about him is bad, but if you see him in interviews, he's actually pretty logical. And I hate to say that because he's you know a communist leader. He's he's done some bad shit, but like I feel like he is portrayed to be way worse than he is because he's come out and said that like the the deep state is a bunch of satanists and they're pedophiles and stuff yep. like that and he says you know things like you know every 4 years the american president changes but the agenda doesn't like i feel like he knows what's going on so they don't like him they want him ousted so this is like the same way thing they're doing to donald trump I don't know. That's just my feeling. This is the biggest, this is the collateral damage of like the death of journalism. And just so you, because mainstream media tells us what we should think about Putin or, or anyone for that matter. And that's exactly. the problem because you can't trust shit they say. Even Zach, who's skeptical in a lot of these cases, you don't fucking buy half the shit that you see on TV, I'm sure. Right, Zach? No. No, what? Yeah. I mean, so it's just like you're, you're, you're asking these people to, to be your uh, conscience, even, right? Like it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Even on both sides, um, Fox, CNN, whoever, they're all guilty of it. But I sent, I'm just going to pivot real quick. I sent this link earlier of Cuomo talking about um, mm. Trump. This isn't, this isn't necessarily like him lying or, or anything. But when you want to talk about like, this says breaking news, Donald Trump took his mask off at the White House. <laughs> like, stupid saying again so he could put out propaganda, fronting a lie to his people. Once again, just like, don't worry about the mask. Now he says, don't worry about COVID. Don't let it control your life. Just propaganda. Like th- this isn't news, by the way. Chris Cuomo, fucking. Pl- I don't even know if he had did COVID. You, did you see the end of this clip, by the way? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the end is like the That's best part. Is. I know this sound to it. I'm not going to play it for you. Why should I? How much bullshit do you need in your life? <laughs> um. Also, this is the guy who also lied about his fight with COVID, and yep. he said he stayed in his basement for two weeks, and he was actually like house shopping down the street, like. F- so, but I like, yeah, no, I don't believe anything I see. And it's not even hard to figure out why. I mean, this is so, it says breaking news. Donald Trump, back at White House, dangerously removes mask. Dangerously. <laughs> yeah. I saw a really funny comment that said like, oh, you're not supposed to take your mask off when you get home? I, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and th- that's the thing too, is like, he's already manipulating the words saying, Trump says, don't worry about COVID. Trump never said that. Trump was basically saying, don't let it rule your life. Don't live in fear of COVID. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And I think that's the right message, but obviously the liberal media takes it and tries to make him look like a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's go back to another older story here. Uh, we spent some time talking about COVID Trump and also some like the Satanists and all that stuff. This kind of is, is somewhere in the middle, I guess, Netflix, Mm. Um, is in some hot water, it seems like, for cuties that the yeah. general public saw and they they puked on Twitter all over Netflix and canceled and, and threatened everything. Netflix, I don't think, ever came out with a real statement other than we stand behind the film, right? Yeah, I forget. It was some, like, corporate jargon bullshit. Like, yeah. it didn't say anything. Um, but this is this is great to see. I mean, I heard their stock tanked again today because of this. Uh, but yeah, the Texas grand jury is indicting Netflix for knowingly promoting material in the film Cuties, which depicts the lewd exhibition of the genitals or pubic area of a clothed or partially clothed child who is under 18. That good, good. Fuck you, Netflix. Like, I'm so sick of this pedophilia bullshit. It's, uh, well, it's <clears throat> encouraging to see like some sort of legal action actually being taken against these big yeah. companies. But, like, I don't think anything will happen. Like, this will go away soon, I'm sure. It'll settle. They'll settle, like, $300 yeah. million or some bullshit. Right. It does answer the question, like, that we were talking about last time uh, around, what were the other shows? Tiaras or whatever? What did you yeah, say? Um, toddlers and Tiaras. The toddlers and Tiaras. So I guess there is a difference in the content. I, I've never seen either of them. But mm. this clearly states that it's, like, showing the pubic region. I'm sure it's obviously... That's so in clothing, cool. but like I'm like what zoom like uh, close ups and stuff like that is how I interpret that, right? It's sexually like suggestive. That. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. I, I don't know the context, but yeah, it's, it's fucking fun. twisted. I'm just um, glad yeah. this this also goes to show that the agenda is not working, where they're trying to normalize pedophilia. 
it's showing that people are standing up and dis they're disgusted with it. Um, so I'm hype, excited about that. This stuff like erodes over time, though. These are like seeds you plant and work towards for years before they harvest. Like I feel like this type of social conditioning. I agree. I think they're trying to speed up the timeline, and I don't yeah. think it's working in their favor. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, they're not letting really Q folks speak out about cuties or anything for that matter. Uh, Facebook's cracking down. You know, Twitter's cracking down. Everyone's cracking down on what you can and can't say as it pertains to the Q anon theory. So we have something on uh, the bias news here. Did we, by the way, did we talk about like the Congress yeah. bill? Uh, did we, we talked about that last episode. Yeah. Yeah, and this is just like, so Facebook announces that starting today, it will remove any Facebook pages, groups, and Instagram accounts representing QAnon, even if they contain no violent content. Of course, because none of them contain violent content. This is the way right. to cover their ass. This is unbelievable. I mean, this just further proves Q. Like, I mean, they, they're completely <laughs> mischaracterizing. <laughs> That's great. That is cool. <laughs> uh, they're completely mischaracterizing what Q is, and it's being condemned by so many different groups and banning people. Like, why would you go to these lengths if it wasn't, you know, damaging to the agenda? That's the way I look at it. What's frustrating is it doesn't really cite for any sort of reason. I mean, exactly. it, it's all of a sudden a terms and condition violation. Is that the angle? That's the, That's all they can say, right? Yeah, I mean, unless it, they're like somehow quoting that bill that we talked about last episode and being like, because, you know, the House of Representatives, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I realize I said bill, but I don't, I think it was just them collectively condemning the group. Like, I don't think any actual. That was a bill. We showed a bill. I, but, but like, okay, there was a bill, but like what, I, but they, it, nothing happened. They were just like, no, yes, we all agree. like. QAnon, I feel like. Well, maybe it wasn't a waste of time. Maybe they're getting what they want now. Like to your point, you just said, maybe, all right, we condemn QAnon from the eyes of justice. And now these large entities like Facebook are going to fall in line. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, that's, you're probably right. They probably made a backdoor deal about that. And to think that th they're not condemning someone like Antifa that's destroying our country. Like, are you it's fucking a, kidding me? Well, Antifa is only an idea. <laughs> Um, I think that now that <clears throat> I think that Bill did say something about like again, according to them, QAnon is inciting violence or, or something like that. Yeah, it inspires terrorists and shit. Like oh that. yeah, that's right. It did say the terrorist thing too. But you can't even compare it to Antifa. Like, there's no comparison. Like, uh, it's just ridiculous. It's sad. So. You know, your QAnon friends and family uh, and us will we'll likely get pulled down eventually. I don't doubt that fact because we uh, kind of post certain things. So if you see us magically disappear, you know, they're doing uh, they're doing their job in silencing us. So I know we uh, should find a way that like we can be like at least in touch person. in touch with people. If we do have to like get, if we get booted from like a bunch of platforms, be like, find us over here kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Why don't we just pick a different letter? We could do that. Because like now it's all like Q, 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 Q. It's like, why, why isn't everyone like, let's just move to the next letter. It's the same <laughs> same, same group of people. I know Q has significance, but not anymore. Now everybody, let's just is our letter. R. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Go with R. Okay. <laughs> R, R and on. <laughs> what do you guys think about Biden's comments this week? I've heard it a little bit throughout the day. I think I can maybe make a defense for some of it, but I wanted to hear it and, and also kind of hear what you guys had to say. A, total pandering or a pandering attempt. B, if Trump ever said something like this, you'd, he'd be crucified. But it, it's all taken in stride because it's fucking Joe Biden. See, the reason I was able to stay sequestered in my home is because some black woman was able to stack the grocery shelf. <laughs> He's trying to go with one of those old... Um, I can have a barbecue because the soldiers are serving in the army type of comment. Yeah. That's yeah, how right. I hear it. I can live comfortably because someone else is making the sacrifice. The way he phrased it and his history in these situations is terrible. If, if he wrote that, if someone wrote it out like that and he read it, that person deserves to be fired. But he could have, sure. he could have had that thought in a better way. Right. Absolutely. Right. I, like I, 
I don't think there was any racist intention in what he said, but of course, if Trump said it, that's definitely would have been oh, spun. Yeah. I think that he just poor choice of words. He shouldn't have said it like that for sure. But I don't think there was any like racist intent in that either. But what other way could you say that? Like, <laughs> it's no, just, I, I agree with Elvin's point. Like he's trying to be like, you know, some working class person is putting groceries on the shelves and that allows me. That. Right. right. Well, that's he. You're right. He over pandered. He pandered to like too yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, and, he started playing identity politics with it and it backfired immediately. Right. Right. They, they have to cram it into every sentence they say. Like they have to somehow figure out how to like pander with every every statement that comes out of their mouth. Um, also, take the fucking mask off. I can't even hear you. Like I know. There's no one near you. You got a microphone. Like, blah, 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 blah. like take the fucking mask off. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. The biggest mask you'll ever see, or whatever Trump said. Yeah, that was that was that was so. Like, <laughs> what, dude? You're wasting oh, your time. Way, I know. I went to uh, um, a bar last night for the first time in like six months indoors and watched the Patriots game, and it was like pretty full. And well, you live in New Hampshire too, so actually, it was in Mass. Oh, what? Yep, it was oh, technically wow. in Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, right over the line. And I, that's what I was thinking. I'm like it's like right on the border i'm like is this the address is definitely in massachusetts i'm like are they just playing by the new hampshire rules because everyone thinks it's in new hampshire <laughs> I, I, like i don't know but i was like i like normal felt weird it definitely felt weird being in there i it, it was great i was so glad that i got to do it and just hang out but it was definitely strange let's make some predictions when are we going to go back to no mask life depends who's president Let's say Trump wins. Let's say Trump wins. Trump wins by the spring. Okay. I mean, I think like, you know how like certain Asian cultures, I think it's mostly in China. They like wear masks before this, like all the yeah, time. Because they're they're so small, you can't even breathe there. It's so unhealthy. Is it only for that reason? I'm pretty sure that's like the main driver. Cause, cause that one to me, Elvin, you, I don't know if this was an original from you or you saw a tweet where someone was like, how can you rip a fart? Through underwear, jeans, oh, and no. still, I still get it. Still smells. I still, yeah. it's still something's still hitting me in the face. So Drop the smog it. thing, like, are you still inhaling it? Is that actually stopping the smog? If you just get a little paper mask on, I feel like you would need like an airtight bubble over your head or something. Just like masks now, it makes some people feel better. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, to, to, your question, to your question, oh, yeah. though, I, 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 I almost want to say some people like never. Maybe, but the vast majority of people, most normal people, yeah, maybe, maybe in the spring. I think that's probably a good timeline. And you think that's both you guys think it's longer than that if Biden's in office, or are we in the spring either way? Is the prediction? I think it's funny because I think if Biden wins, the virus goes away sooner, but the masks last longer. I think, I think <laughs> another two years. Wow. Like, honestly. It's just egregious, and it's a show of power and or control, I should say. And I but think, they, do you think they would still talk about it though? Because they're using it right now as a way to beat Trump. So if they beat Trump, it's like mission accomplished. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Well, like I, I think it's also like control. I think it's like, well, how long can we make them wear it for? How long can we get away with this for? Kind of thing, and just be like, well, you never know. If another pandemic starts, you should be ready. Just yeah. wear a mask everywhere. I actually could see that being like. <clears throat> Uh, what happened in the pandemic of 2020 so for, for precautionary reasons you should always wear a mask in public like i could see like if like stadiums and like theme parks get to like full capacity again masks yeah. being mandatory there i'll never go to them then i know no, no me either no. fuck that i want to have fun like i'm that petty guy that's like i'll wear a mask because i have to but i avoid going places because i just don't want to put the fucking mask on it's uncomfortable yep. are, are, are people just going to start having like uh a waiver like where it's like I, i'm not i know that this is a mask free place and i i'm still i want to go with no mask and i know nobody else will have a mask but why can't we all just agree that we're okay with not having masks collectively you could do that but then you kind of open up the door to because a lot of people ban smoking in establishments right so by by your um, like using your logic you should be able to have a, a bar that you could smoke indoors as long as everyone Know yeah. what they're walking into. I agree with that, but I don't know if we're ever going to go in that they, direction. What do you mean? They still exist, like Elks clubs and Legion clubs and stuff. Those, well, aren't those can... like they're nonprofit, kind of different. They have different laws, don't they? Sort of. I think so. uh, it's just a privately run club. So when you pay your membership, you're agreeing to, you know, what the members want to do. Um, okay. You know, it's 
because they're where in the town that me and E grew up in. Like I've been to one of them like just before this all started. My father in law is like a member at one, and these dudes are ripping butts, fucking you know, elbow to elbow oh, along okay. the bar. Yeah, yeah. I thought that shit was banned everywhere. No, like, no, including the private establishments. Wow. No, okay. No. All right. So we're thinking maybe a long time with the masks. If if Biden wins, another reason to, to get out there and vote. Speaking of like all the voting stuff, so uh, I know we're going to talk about Trump here in a second, but have you guys seen the um, NBA, um, any of the NBA playoffs? Any of like the presentation? No. no. Oh my God. I, I tried to watch one episode, yeah, one episode, one game earlier in the season, and it was just like too much like social justice versus playing basketball. And I was just like, this is. It's insane what that sport has turned into. They are laying it on thick. And they had like record lows for the finals games for viewership. It's just like, there you go, man. No one wants to get preaching uh, preaching done uh, during a basketball game. So anyway, I digress. Trump, was he actually at the hospital? What do you think? Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I do think he was there. But there's there's a few things that I stumbled upon that suggest otherwise that made me think, you know, what the hell's going on here? Um, this was just the original video. And the reason that I put this up, even just, you don't even have to play the video. We've all seen it. But the background, if you look at, you know, the background with the white cabinets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and the next link that I have is basically an article that has, you know, a gallery of pictures from the suite that he was staying in at the hospital. And there's not one room that seems to look like that. So I wanted to uh, – I think you can just – yeah. I mean, granted, there's only four pictures, but – Damn, that place looks run down. <laughs> this room, too, like Donald Trump ain't sleeping in that bed. No. Look at how small – and that bed looks like my grandmother's house. It looks you know, like incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> So he supposedly um, spent what three days in this facility that we're looking at right correct. now. Correct. Yeah. And did you see? I'm going to digress again. Did you see all the people? Everybody, they have to figure out a reason to say fuck Trump. They were like, "This is how taxpayer dollars are being spent. This he gets to stay in a place like this while other people suffer." And blah blah. It's he's the he's the president of the United States for Christ's sake. And he's trying to work while he's sick. Fuck you. Let him work. I like, thought that yeah. was like, come on, people. I, unless. I don't know. Maybe they're just trolls and they, they got me if they did good job. But like, <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that actually felt that way. Um, my, my thing with the backdrop that is kind of interesting. Um, oh, this might be pictures oh, sure, from it too. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I actually would be open. I kind of threw it out there jokingly, but I'd be open to the idea that these videos were recorded before yep. he ever got sick. That, like just in case. That, that's kind of more the direction I'm leaning anyway. But right. like, None of these backgrounds look like they are, you know, where that video was taken. So maybe there's a room we yeah. don't know of, but I just wanted to throw that out there as some evidence. Um, what's the next one we have about this? Aircraft carrier? Yeah. So somebody put up a video on Twitter and you don't have to play it with volume or anything if you want to just uh, show it. Now, this was from him giving that little um, dialogue to the camera for Twitter and they uh they're basically like showing how like it looks like there's a like a it's bobbing a little bit i guess should i, I mean, fast forward it? yeah fast forward a little till the, like they show the oh he's oh. yeah ah, this guy's getting yeah so go like halfway through so he's got like the bottom of the flag the bottom of this and the top of the shoulder stuff like that and then we got an ad plan you what? You got you, audio going. I have no audio. Me neither. Someone does. <laughs> no? But yeah, basically this, this video is just showing, maybe it's on another, I don't have it. I don't hear any audio. Do you still hear oh. it? Just no, it not computer? anymore. Okay. I have no idea what, what that was. Um, uh, can't the camera be moving? I Yes, like, well, yeah, they're saying the camera's moving up and down because the boat is not like flat. So they're saying that maybe he was on an aircraft carrier, you know, because we had this theory that maybe this was when the arrests were going to happen and they were just getting him to safety or something. But I think you're right, more, more likely that 
these videos were pre-recorded and this next link will kind of yeah yeah i saw this one too um yeah i i i think at the end of the day he definitely had covid and he definitely was in the, the hospital i mean I, I don't think like you don't need to um to lie about all that i don't i don't well, feel even like. the liberals are going nuts with conspiracy theories thinking that you know he's doing this as a whole publicity stunt but basically these pictures were taken 10 minutes apart the rooms look completely different when he's got his jacket on um yeah. i <clears throat> so tim pool had some sort of explanation about the metadata and photographs and when and their time stamped and why this just means the photos were like processed off of the camera within 10 minutes of each other, but not taken within 10 minutes, minutes oh. of each other, something like that. He had some pretty quick uh, rebuttal to, to this. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I, I saw people like referencing like the reflections on the desk and like getting crazy about how like uh, the angles aren't even real. This is Photoshopped. Um, <laughs> people referencing deep fakes. Um, yep. I saw some guy was like, oh, his shirt is like pixelated and glitchy because like the shadows were like changing on it in a funny way. Like, so what, what is that? What, what does that mean? <laughs> <What> the, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then the next link here. So, yeah, I mean that, the, I think the best assessment is those videos were probably recorded before him, before he went into the hospital, sure. just to kind of make sure he looked good and make sure he looked yeah. still with it. Yep. Well, and just in case things did go south and he could kind of still amp up the American people. Yeah. Um, but then this happened. Then he decided to take this little lap around uh, Walter Reed because he had a bunch of fans outside, you know, wishing him well. And the libs are losing their mind over this. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like, he's he's endangering those secret service guys, blah, blah, blah. Well, aren't they in the room with him anyway when he's right. in the hospital? I mean, right. these guys agree to take a bullet for him, right? I mean, I think they're okay with the risk. Exactly. And, like, I'm sure they're constantly tested. I'm sure that, like, they know the level of, like, contamination that's possible. So I, I just think it's funny, though. The liberals will find anything. Like, Trump is clearly doing better in this picture, clearly going out to, like, I think this is a dope move. I think this was really cool. Like... It shows, if nothing else, that he's just like his work ethic is nonstop. Like he's probably sitting in his room and all his experts are saying, hey, don't go anywhere. Don't move. Just relax. Just chill. Treat this like a vacation. He's like, no, I got to do something, even yeah. if it's drive around the fucking block. Right. Yeah, they did say that. They were like, he would only sit down for like 20 minutes at a time. And they kept saying, like, stop. And he was like, no, he had to go do this or do that. Um, <laughs> he's a sales guy. He's always right. trying to do something like he's shaking. He's moving and shaking out there. I mean, that reaction's outrageous. It is. It's absolutely outrageous. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to pull up the next one here, Trump, you know, not only went out to see his supporters, but at one point he had like his chief of staff go out and give everybody chocolates. And then on this next link, he, I know that's kind of <laughs> random, but he ordered pizzas every 40. He had them come every 45 minutes, which I love because 45. And <laughs> maybe he's trolling Pizzagate here again. So if you want to play the volume on this, this guy's <laughs> every 45 minutes to a half hour, Donald Trump is dropping off hot pizza. And you know it's from Trump because this shit isn't gluten free. That was a great line. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> Uh, I, I get, and not everything with pizza has to be about Pizzagate. Well, P Trump did know about Pizzagate. I don't know. Yeah, but that's like the most common thing to go drop off for like. Yeah. I mean, what else do you got to drop off? Like five steak subs or something? Tr <laughs> Trump, Trump steaks. <laughs> Trump steaks. <laughs> you, know what you know what? Actually, he could have dropped off Boston Brew. That's what he could have done. Should've. Boston Brew Company does deliver no contact. You can also get it for twenty percent off uh, by using channel. Uh, I'm sorry, by using zero as your promo code at BostonBrewCompany.com/store. We have it playing on the YouTube right now. Like, I don't know if our friends at Boston Brew appreciate this in the ad read, but I'd make love to their coffee. Like, I would just like, <laughs> I've considered it, 
It's it's lonely in isolation. <laughs> it's lonely in isolation, and sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, you know what? If you didn't taste so great, I'd do some dirty shit to you. Oh my we, god! We talked about it before. In all seriousness, if you drink Dunkin' Donuts extra oh. extra fucking bullshit, just try this, please, and thank us later because like your perception of coffee is fucked. And if you drink Dunks extra are, extra Dunks, of anything. Dunks doesn't yeah. give a shit about you. Support a local business. Yep. Not Dunks. only that, but but show Boston Brew Company how much you love us. Even if you're not in the Boston area, tell Boston Brew Company, I wish you can get to wherever you are. Insert your city and state just so he knows that you're coming from Channel Zero um, and, and he, feel goes, he feels good about it. So we know you will. E, have you had a, have you had a Boston Brew this week? Or are you taking uh, it easy? This week, I, uh, I got to order some more. Use that, that promo code. Do you think, by the way, if, you, if Trump was to order Boston Brew for everybody else, out there. Do you think he would know to use the promo code? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that would be my life goal. But anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, on the pizza subject, I want to shout out Corey Allard. He uh, he always sends me good shit on Twitter. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. And this is a clip from a while ago before Trump was president. I just want people to know that like Trump is aware of Pizzagate. And he even mentioned it on the air. See it. Last time I had him on my show was in a fairly lively debate with you, actually. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, I was a little surprised by that debate because all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere and starts going crazy. And, you know, uh, I've known him over the years and I learned a lot about him that night. I was absolutely shocked. I mean, he was, I found to be almost unstable. And I watched this today because I was watching between Pizzagate and uh, Anthony Weiner. I found <laughs> Pizzagate and uh, Pizzagate and uh, Anthony. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I love that editing. That's great. But no yeah. coincidence that he brought it up while talking about Weiner too. Yep. Oh, for sure. Because for anyone just listening, that's what they—that's who they were talking about was Anthony Weiner, right? And supposedly Weiner's laptop has a lot of PizzaGate shit on it, right? So interesting that Trump was well aware of this in 2011. So I, I'm not saying he was trolling with the pizzas. I'd like to think he was, but I love the fact that he got him delivered every 45 minutes. That's pretty. Cool. <laughs> I like that. I like his awareness. I like his commitment to breaking up these sex trafficking rings. And we have another one. This one's actually in the UK. You guys a big fan of uh, Seagram? Is that gin? Yeah. I'm really not a fan. That's gin, right? I like the Don't they have... Oh, yeah. I was thinking of the booze. They Me make, too. They make gin and ginger ale, yeah. Oh, they oh. make ball. Okay. About that. This actually wasn't in the UK. Claire Bronfman, Claire Bronfman herself is from the UK. She's the Seagram's heiress. But a lot of people, you know... It, 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 don't know about this. This happened in 2018. The Nexium sex cult went down, and which was, which was like a pyramid scheme, right? It was and uh, multi level marketing, as they call it. Exactly, and basically it, they were Keith Rainier was the the leader of it all, and Claire Bronfman was the one who basically funded it. And they actually got a a, a visit from the Dalai Lama themselves as well. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> but um, they they've already found this is. You, we can back this up full evidence like uh they were branding the girls um what's the name of that that celebrity that was a part of recruiting the girls um from smallville the chick uh, oh something mac yeah uh, uh mac or something like that anyways so this is like a, another proven epstein like sex trafficking network that was brought down in 2018 that a lot of people weren't aware of it didn't make headline news because people didn't know the characters involved I feel like this is just, uh, it's good that Claire Bronfman is going to jail. I think she got like six, six months though, right? Six years. No, six, oh, years. Is it six years? Six years, nine months. Six years, nine months. Uh, that's still not enough. No. No fucking way. I remember reading and going, that's it. So six years is at least better. Than I was actually months. shocked that somebody with this much money and I'm sure power because of her family actually got sentenced. I know. And it, it's taken two years. Right. Like, yeah. I'm sure she's, you know, tried everything in the book to stop it from happening. But I look at her as like almost maybe not as bad, but another Ghislaine. Right. 
But they're probably going to say, oh, two years, we're going to treat that as time served. We're going to let you out in two years on good behavior. You're, you're, right. you're on your way. And thanks for the 10 mil under the table. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So those who don't think Trump is taking down sex trafficking networks, he absolutely is and has been. Will that come up if we have a debate in the debate number two? If it happens, are we going to talk about any of that stuff ever? Only if Trump brings it up and he doesn't seem to bring it up on his own. Because like at the, that is like the Achilles heel of the, the deep state. Like I feel like – so if he brings that up, it's going to be all out war on him. And they're going to – like I mean it already is, but it's going to be to a whole new level. So if they if they have an immigration discussion though, you can kind of fit that in there. You could, yep. Yeah, you could absolutely tool that. And in you got to talk immigration, I imagine. Like we haven't even talked about the wall or any of that stuff, or where Biden stands on any of that. He's just going to let everyone in, I'm sure. And give them all free health care. Fuck yeah. that. I yeah. think he did <laughs> in the dem in the Democratic uh, nominee debate. Um, it, you could tell when they asked that question about like free health care to illegal uh, immigrants, and like. You know, uh, Bernie and whoever, their hands went right up. You could tell everyone was like, oh, fuck. Like, I, yeah. I, I have to raise my hand or I look terrible. Like, yeah. and so every single person on the stage put their hand up. Yeah. Gross. Like, pandering. So we had some more news on Epstein and Gates as well um, surrounding the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Yeah. So this came out this week. I was out of nowhere, didn't see this coming. But a new report reveals that Bill Gates and Jeff Epstein, who Bill Gates claims he was not friends with Jeff Epstein. Yeah, boy, uh, Zach. Yep, Zach's boy. <laughs> met with, uh, if you scroll down, I don't, I don't know his name, some Norwegian guy who, um, this guy, Thorbjorn Jagland. Um, basically, well done. He, he met with them and they influenced his decision to nominate Obama for the Nobel Peace Prize. And... Um, it just like in good. Did Obama win the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah. For what? His first year, too, right? For nothing. Cause like didn't I feel like every president kind of has this, but like I don't know what he won, but kill more innocent people with drone strikes than anybody else. And I mean, if people are mad that Trump Trump is like literally brokering peace in the Middle East and he hasn't started any international conflicts. Right. Like so he deserves it. But yeah, so with Epstein and Gates lobbying for you, that's not a good look. Uh, if you scroll down in the article too, it does also say that um, they arrived together. So clearly Gates and Epstein were tight. Took it a says, little detour. Guy Jagland uh, gave the Nobel Peace Prize to Barack Obama in 2009. So mm -hmm. right eight months after he took over the Nobel committee. So this guy was just appointed to like the head of the Nobel committee too. Mm -hmm. For extraordinary efforts to strengthen international diplomacy. Right. <laughs> Whatever that fucking means. It means nothing. And then, yeah, look at right here in the uh, italicized, uh, it says, according to him, Gates and Epstein arrived together. Wow. Further proving the connection. So I don't think that like anything's going to come out of this so much, but I just wanted to kind of more, encapsulate like that these people all are together it's so crazy it's a spider web and that's why taking oh, someone yeah. out is so difficult because everyone else is connected and, and trying to cover it up or protect it or bribe it away or whatever it is right exactly and this uh next link that i have here is actually a, a video that uh a news station did on their friendship so you want to play, you know, what is this? Two, almost all of it. Play, play like the first minute and a half. So. A shocking new report from the New York Times sheds light on the connection between Microsoft founder Bill Gates and the late Jeffrey Epstein. So whose team is the New York Times on? I didn't think they would run a piece like that. I know. I, I don't know what their aim is here. It's kind of weird because I MSNBC and New York Times, that's like too super liberal. Like, I don't know. After Gates's name came up in connection with Epstein and MIT Media Lab, Gates gave a statement to the Wall Street Journal where he insisted he did not have any business relationship or friendship with Epstein. But new reporting from the New York Times outlines numerous meetings between Gates and Epstein and a conversation with Bill and Melinda Gates's foundation, a connection between their foundation and JP Morgan to set up a charitable fund that would financially benefit Epstein. 
You know what I want to know? Why? Joining me now, one of the New York Times reporters from this story, James B. Stewart, who is also the author of a new book I highly recommend, Deep State, Trump, the FBI, and the Rule of Law. Let's start with this. Gabe says, no relationship, not on nothing. You report these two men met at least six times. What does Gates say about that? Well, I believe that there were more, and he, and he and his spokespeople would not say how many in total they actually met. But this included visits to the mansion, uh, seeing each other in Seattle, flying on Epstein's plane, when we all know Bill Gates has his own $40 million plane. Um, and then, as an investigative reporter, the why would Gates say, oh, I had no relationship with him when, of course, he knows what the facts are? So that's, that always sets off red flags for me. He also has one of the largest, most established foundations on his own. Yes. Why would they ever set up a charitable trust benefiting Jeffrey Epstein? Well, What's the explanation? not only does he have the world's largest charitable foundation, but one of their primary missions is to help young women in un underprivileged countries. Jeffrey Epstein was preying on young women from Eastern Europe, from South Africa, luring them into his web. And it's the antithesis of what the Gates Foundation stands for. And by the way, there were Gates Foundation employees who were horrified when they realized what Jeffrey Epstein had done and was saying, we don't want to have anything to do with this. And yet the project went on. And what is the Gates explanation for this? That it was all about philanthropy, that Bill Gates just wanted to find new sources of money. Guys, I officially disavow Bill Gates. <laughs> wow. What's funny, when, when, when we first started talking about that, though, I was basically saying I didn't think he was trying to, like, poison and kill children all over the world uh, with vaccines. Yeah. Um, obviously, this, I mean, there's no reasonable explanation for that. He's obviously caught up in that. Um, but the guy actually brought up the point that I was going to say at the end where he was like, why would he lie in the first place? Instead of being like, yes, I knew him. I wasn't involved in that, but he was well connected. And I, I it was business dealings, I had a business relationship with him. Like right. he could have done that, but I didn't have a personal relationship. Um, because I do think it to some extent, like some of these people, when they initially get connected, they might be doing it because they think it's, it'll put more money in their pocket or be beneficial to them from a business standpoint. Yeah, but honestly, that wasn't the case with these two. If I'm reading in between the lines on that clip, I hear Epstein wants to launder money through Gates. He's willing to pay Gates a handsome fee in order to do so, but is hoping for access to Gates' network as well uh, in exchange for that, is what I'm hearing. And obviously, I'm recklessly speculating, but it sounds like there's an agreement there for money to be cleaned and... Uh, you know, some sort of exchange with with his network and nonprofits, right? Probably, probably because he has blackmail on Gates. That's that's my guess, and yeah, that, that that's what I was going to say is why would Gates go into something that primarily benefits Epstein? The guy he clearly wants to make more money. The, right. the one word that sticks out to me from this whole thing is the word philanthropy. Yeah. Oh because yeah. Anytime you see a rich person getting involved in philanthropy, that's exactly not what they're doing. <laughs> they're, they're using their money to influence something on a much larger scale. Like when um, the Rockefellers, who were friends with Bill Gates' dad, by the way, influenced our entire medical system. When the, uh, the Carnegies took all their money in the 50s and influenced our um, educational system. It's, it's always termed as philanthropy. And then that's the turning point for that, whatever facet they get involved in. It's so fucked up. Have the people under your thumb. I mean, they need the money to take, you know, do whatever but they're trying to do. But then you set the rules. And that's right. what's fucked up. I'll only give you this money if. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dirt, dirty on that. Let us know what you guys think about Bill Gates. Are you, are you, you know, because we also had the other, not quite at Bill Gates level, but uh, McAfee. Yeah. Up. Um, uh, so he, he, the indictment was unsealed. Was he officially arrested, Elvin? I read that he was arrested. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could be wrong on that. So no, I believe it. Uh, what did he get arrested for this time? Because <laughs> he's tax evasion, tax, 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 tax charges. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they found him, uh, elbow deep in someone? Oh, probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> he's dude, a fucking lunatic. If anybody, yeah, we've talked about this on the show, his Twitter. Oh my God! It's the yeah. most real thing ever. He's seventy-five. Whoa! Surprising, like judging by the life 
that he leads. He looks pretty good for 75. Yeah. Yeah. Um, adrenochrome. A lot of that. Pump yeah. it in. He, doesn't he seem like a, more like on the fringe, like not in those circles guy? That's why he's been crazy, pushed out. Like he's dropping bombs on Twitter. Like, yeah. People of doing stuff. He hates the fucking masks. He hates go government control. That's true. Yeah. He is in line with like, the deep state narrative. He, he kind of falls in like a like poor man's or like like Elon Musk. Like Elon Musk, crazy little nephew that isn't as successful. I mean, the little crazy guy, or crazy drunk uncle. I mean. Or yeah, yeah. I guess he's well older, much older than him. But yeah, no, but that's what I mean. He's like yeah. it's almost not in those circles. He's on. Yeah, the train. it's true. All right, where else do we want to go? We're a little bit at clock. You want to do anything else? I feel like we're ahead, which is kind of crazy. That never happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to do number four, 24, because this was a Q post um, that I, I thought was pretty interesting. Um, basically, which one was this? <laughs> of course, I'm like just grabbing it. Oh, yeah. So apparently the another U.S. attorney of the Southern District of New York, which we all know for the Epstein and Ghislaine and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, he he stepped down and he was like related related to um, Comey or something like that. No, it was it, the U.S. Attorney of uh, SDNY Southern District of New York steps down and Lucas Isaac Haruf steps in. This is Comey's son-in-law. There we go. Comey's son-in-law. So Comey's yeah. son-in-law is now running some shit over at the Southern District of New York or in charge of something right. that makes me very sketched out about what's going to happen with Ghislaine. I don't like it. Totally. How does that happen? I know. It's like, they're all so connected. It's crazy. Ugh, that's a fucking shame. Yeah. I still think she's, I think she's already singing though. Like, like this, like a sudden ramp up on takedowns. I don't know if it's directly because of her, but I don't know. It, it seems weird that they got her in custody and all of a sudden, like, shit accelerated. I agree. But I, still nothing, like, about her or coverage right. on her. Yeah. Maybe uh, that's the agreement. Yeah, we still never saw pictures of the, of them whisking her away from this house in New Hampshire or her go, going to New York. or We never saw anything. I know. Well, it makes you wonder when you talk about, like, the Nygaard stuff and others and this other one that just uh, – the Seagram chick and all these different organizations – in a, in a vacuum, you're like, wow, this Epstein-Maxwell thing, there's nothing worse. There's no plea deal that will do because this is the most heinous thing ever. And then you realize, wow, we're still not at the root of the issue. We're still, like, pulling shit up in other areas. Like, there's other things happening that are probably even worse. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's so wild. And, like, everybody's like, well, why isn't the hammer come down? And it's like, these networks are so deep. And then it's like, one thing leads to another. And it's I feel like this case is just expanding. And by the way, on that whole Durham investigation, it's looking now like we won't see any results till after the election. Um, the problem with the drawn out process, though, is that the media and these people have the ability in the meantime to discredit QAnon and call these conspiracies and all this stuff. So they have no backing of the public. Like, that's why I feel like it has to be it had to have been much quicker for the public to get on board. Because now, even if they do start cracking these people down, they're going to be like, no, that's fake. That's a lie. This is a conspiracy, too. They'll like I think people are too far gone on this. I think the way they need to do it is almost like ramp up like and then rapid fire type of thing. Like every single day, it's like new people getting arrested. Like, I think that's the only way to like wake people up because like, you know, it happens once and then people are in disbelief. And then it happens the next day, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And then yeah. it keeps accelerating. It's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. What, on that, what do we think on the ten days of darkness? Is that just not, or do we have to wait till 2021 now? Because you said it didn't say the year. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say the year. No, but uh, Trump got out of the hospital pretty damn quickly. He he had a uh, Prince Harry or whatever, not Prince Harry, Prince Charles turnaround like three days, like 74 years old, not in the greatest health, like fucking rebounded no problem well so the 10 days will have passed by the time we record next week right i think so yeah yeah but okay. remember hey that mickey clock if 10 and 8 is the thing or 10 10 we got a couple <laughs> days coming up to look forward to here guys so that's thursday that's thursday that's tomorrow actually if you're watching us on youtube that's right so 
I mean, maybe something big will pop. I, I feel like this this drop today with the whole um, Hillary thing isn't getting what it should in terms of publicity, but that's big. Um, and now John Durham now has control over the Clinton email investigation and how that was botched. So I think we're on the right track. Just needs to start moving a little quicker. Mm -hmm. What do we do if nothing happens? Biden wins. Is the show over? Like, what are we, what are we talking about? There's got to be an October surprise. There's got to be. I, I, guess, I, I guess we'll have time for a wacky conspiracies at that point. Now we can go back to well, we can go back to all the shit we haven't gotten to. Yeah, we got plenty. <laughs> and we do right. have plenty. That's um, true. So, Zach, do you want to make a bet on if there will be an October surprise or not? What does that mean? Like some big bombshell that comes out either about Biden, Obama, like in favor of Trump. I think so. I think something big is going to drop in this month, probably towards the end, maybe last week or two, that will help shift the uh, people on the fence voting. Um, <laughs> maybe like... Subjective. Because a lot of big bombshells drop all the time, but nobody gives a fuck. Like, to me, like, the videos of Biden sniffing in girls' hair, and I'm like, that should be enough for people to be like, no. I, I'm, not, I'm out. <laughs> <on that. laughs> I'm out. They don't care. It's crazy. Unless it's like an actual arrest or like video. I, that's why I always say the video. We need video. Like video. Seen like, videos. Yeah. Video yeah. with audio of Wiener like. Laptop. Yeah. The Wiener oh. Laptop. Yeah. Of course. That would like, be a huge. Oh. That kind of stuff. Like where it's like undeniably they are doing sick shit and they're going to get arrested. I don't think people care otherwise. Like these headlines about Hillary and these r rumors, even if they're not rumors, people, I, people aren't. It's not sticking. Maybe maybe Flynn will get freed and then, you know, just out the whole wiener laptop. That that could be. Like, there's a lot of days left in this month, guys. And I think <laughs> Trump's, I, Trump's – look, he plays dirty. There, there's no way this month goes by without something big happening. So then I'll make a bet that nothing will happen. And then if you feel like something big enough did happen, we'll let Elvin decide if it was worth it. Yeah, I'll be – I'm cool. I can, I can do that out. if you trust me. All right. Okay. <laughs> Here's the funny thing about conspiracy theorists. Their outlook, I'm not picking on UE in gen I'm just saying in general. Conspiracy theorists have this negative outlook that the world is being controlled by satanic pedophiles and everything is awful and all that. And we we talk about that all the time. But then they can have the optimism that something is right around the corner from <laughs> happening in, in, in the favor of the good guys. It's amazing the yin yeah, the yin and yang of a conspiracy theorist psyche. Is, it is. Can, it's wild. Can, can I just say for the record, up until Trump ran for office, I was never into politics. I thought that the world was a bag of shit and that we were just like doomed. I, you know, with all my conspiracy theories, I thought that we were moving towards a one world government and everything like that. And then when Trump somehow won, I was like, wait, what? And then in 2017, when Q started dropping, there was hope. So I always, I haven't always been this way. Okay. I'm going to hang on to anything that I can because life's dark without Q. Okay. <laughs> he keeps the line up. Would you consider yourself a, like a, a member of the, the QAnon movie? Like if someone asked you and they're like, hey, like are you a, a Q person? Like I know you're into it, but would you consider yourself like in it? In it, in it? No. No. Because I'm not like actively like – putting stuff all over Twitter that's like I'm working with other people to decode things. Like there's yeah. people that are in the fucking weeds with this shit. Hello, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make sense <laughs> yeah. of like high level, you know, watch some videos on some other conspiracy theory guys and let them explain it to me and see if that jives. So I'm I'm a big fan of Q, but I wouldn't consider myself like I guess you know what? If you want to say part of the Q movement, sure. I mean you took the pledge, right? The oath. <laughs> the oath. I don't need to take or the, the oath. Yeah. Everyone knows how dedicated I am. To this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So that is what we have for you this week. We will be back for more next week. Special thanks to Boston Brew Company. Go check them out and buy some fucking coffee. Special thanks to you guys for uh, hanging out with me this evening, shooting the shit. And you listeners and viewers, uh, we love you all. I love that shirt. Pencil neck for life. Um, hey, really quick. Um, yeah. Rollingstone.com, top 100 greatest guitarists of all time. Van Halen's number eight on this list. 
Who's so, one? Clapton or Hendricks? Hendricks is one. Clapton's two. Also, a couple guys above Van Halen are just like Chuck Berry and Keith Richards. They're not better guitar. Pioneers. They're just like more, yeah, more le like legendary names. But anyway, just want to throw that out there. Interesting. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching, listening. Like, subscribe, share. You know what? I want to actually say really quick before we go. Uh, I'm not going to say the city names, but uh, state of Washington got our back. So if you're a listener from the state of Washington, we applaud you. You're the largest segment, actually, of Channel Zero uh, v uh, listeners on the RSS. So we don't know about the YouTube for obvious reasons, but we do know state of Washington. We got your back. New York number two. So. Oh, all right. Hold on. Everyone's going to express VPN and it's routing through Washington or something. Okay, yeah. that could be the case. That yeah. could be the case. However, if these stats are true, let's take them at face value. Think about these two sit like are the main cities there. They're the most affected by all this bullshit. These yep. people are probably so awake to what's going on. They can't talk oh. openly at they home. Can't. Right. They're outcasts they're in their own like neighborhood, most likely. Super liberal places, they're getting ransacked. Like, thank you, first of all. But like that, like I feel like gives us some validity right yeah yeah georgia being number three so okay yeah lots of georgia. A lot of patriots down there yeah so yeah. shockingly which, not massachusetts which is interesting that doesn't make any sense. we have no <laughs> friends or family that support us apparently that makes so, no sense. so thank you to all of the listeners special thanks to washington state we love you keep listening and tell your friends about us Talk with us. Fuck your neighbors. Fuck your colleagues out there that are going to demean you and make you feel like a less than. You got us here at Channel Zero. Peace. Later. Peace. Trump will not be president. Highly critical, biased text messages between senior FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. There will be no question about the outcome of this election. And she got ahead of herself. This utterly stunned this campaign. Uh, head home. You should get some sleep. We'll have more to say tomorrow. Our constitutional democracy enshrines the peaceful transfer of power. The peaceful transition of power is one of the hallmarks of our democracy. We want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. These declassified documents that were just released. Uh, officials in the Obama administration were asking for the identities to be unmasked of Americans. Unmasking of aides and staffers of the incoming president. The basic charge, political spying. To disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. Unmasking of American citizens uh, it, it could be a real problem. Why is it that the unmasking of Flynn somehow ended up in the pages of the Washington Post? I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn. The vice president said that yesterday, and then the last name on this list is Joe Biden. The Obama administration was bitter. They wanted to do everything they could to undermine the incoming Trump administration. It's really designed to sabotage and really upend the new administration. An outgoing president and a vice president and a Washington Post columnist and the FBI setting up an incoming administration. Wow, that's a real conspiracy, and nobody wants to talk about it.